Okay, so the first one. You go through your factoring. Is there a GCF? Is there a GCF in the numerator? Five. When you divide everything on top by five, five X divided by five is X. 30 divided by five is six. When you go to the bottom, is there a GCF? Is there a GCF? Yes, it's again five. So you divide everything on the bottom by 5, you get x plus 5. What do you see that's in common? The GCF, the 5. You know 5 divided by 5 is 1. So what's left is x minus 6 over x plus 5. Questions? Okay. Number two. Numerator. Can I do anything with it? It's a monomial. Is there anything I can do with it? No, it's a monomial. So bring it over. In the denominator, is there a GCF? There is. X to the fifth. When you divide by X to the fifth, X to the fifth divided by X to the fifth is one. Bring the four down. 6 minus 5 is 1. What do you see we can simplify, Riley? The x to the fifths cancel out. You're left with 14 over 1 minus 4x. Questions? Okay. No. There's no GCF. But you can find factors of 21 that add up to 10. What did you find? Kelsey? Seven and three. Seven and three. Okay. Denominator, there's no GCF, but we can find... Back to the 14 to add up to 9. What did you find? What did you find? 2 and 7. Smiley, where are you coming from? Mm. What do you see that's in common? The x plus 7. So you have left x plus 3 over x plus 2. Questions? How many got all three of them right on their own? Good. How many got two right? Good. How many got one right? How many got none right because they didn't do it or they just didn't know what they were doing? Okay. Yes, Riley. Hurry up, guys. I'm going to start limiting restrooms now to the beginning or the end. 
because you guys going out during class is not helpful to you. Okay. So we're going to limit it to the beginning or the end. A lot of you stand down there for seven minutes and do nothing. You have plenty of time to pee. Okay. A rational expression, we're on page seven, uh, yeah, seven. Is a fraction contain algebraic expressions in its numerator and denominator? When a rational expression has no common factors other than one or negative one, in its numerator and denominator, it is simplified form is considered prime. Now, I didn't do this period one, two, but I want to do it with you. I'm going to do the restrictions with you because we found out when you do your homework, or in con, they ask you for the restrictions, the exclude value. So I'm going to actually throw them in. So we're going to do them at the same time. So, numerator. Is there a GCF? No. Binomial or trinomial? Trinomial. So come up with factors of 12 that add up to 1. Is Kelsey the only one doing work today? It's Maya. Four and three. Four and three. I love your enthusiasm, Kelsey, though. In the denominator, is there a GCF? Is there two or three terms? Two. So is there subtraction? Is there perfect square roots? Yes. So remember, one plus one minus. The square root of m squared is m. The square root of 16 is four. Before we cancel out, we're gonna do our restrictions. Okay, we're going to put our answer here, and then we're going to say x cannot, oh, m, cannot equal. Take both factors in the denominator and set them equal to zero. So what's the opposite of adding four? So m cannot equal negative 4, and what's the opposite of subtracting 4 here? Adding 4, and 0 plus 4 is 4. So m cannot equal positive 4. Do you remember what they mean? Do you remember what those mean? Because if m is any of these two numbers, what happens? The denominator becomes 0, and you can't divide by 0. Okay? So that's the purpose of the restrictions, to tell you what the variable cannot be, to avoid the 0 in the denominator. So now let's go back. You can see you cancel out the m plus 4s. You're left with m minus 3 over m minus 4. Okay. Questions? Okay, let's back to the second one. Is there a GCF in the numerator? Yes. What is it? 5. So divide the whole top by 5. 5x five divided by 5 is x. 10 divided by 5 is 2. You're probably sitting there saying, oh, there's no restrictions in this one. Wrong. If there's a variable in the denominator, there's a restriction. You're going to set the denominator equal to zero. 
Because you can't factor it. But you can set it all equal to zero. What's the opposite of multiplying by 10? Dividing by 10. So x cannot equal what? What's zero divided by 10? Zero. Okay. Do you see anything I can simplify in that problem? There actually is. It's one thing to simplify. This can't be touched because in parentheses. But these can be touched. Don't they reduce? Divide them out. And what do you get? What do you get when you divide 5 by 10? Not 2. 1 half. So you have 1 half. The x plus 2 is still on the top. And that x is still on the bottom. You can't cancel the x's out because this is added to 2. This is multiplied. They both would have had to be multiplied to cancel x's out, or they both would have had to been the same exact thing to cancel them out. Okay. Questions? No. Okay. Number three. Go ahead and factor. Go ahead and factor. Hint, the top is a monomial. Can you factor it? No. The hint is to leave top alone. I should see people trying to factor instead of just sitting around. In the denominator, is there a GCF? There is. What is it? 2z. GCF you can take in your calculator. Z squared or z, you take z. Okay, right, when you divide it out, Four divided by two is two. Two minus one is one. Ten divided by two is five. One minus one is zero. How many things do I have to set equal to zero in the denominator? How many z's do you see in the denominator? Two. So you need to set both of those equal to zero. So you need to set the 2z equal to zero and the 2z plus 5 equal to zero. Okay. What's the opposite of multiplying by two? Two. 
So z cannot equal zero. We want to get that five out of there first. So what's the opposite of adding five? Subtracting five. So I have two z equals negative five. Now I gotta get it rid of the two. What am I gonna do? Divide by two. Z cannot equal negative two and a half or two point five or negative five halves. Riley Hood off. Thank you. Okay. So let's go back up. We're going to say z cannot equal zero and negative two and a half, or however you wrote it. What can I simplify in that rational expression? What can I simplify? Yeah? Ron? Yeah. 6z with the 2z. So this 2z plus 5 is going to stay there. z divided by z is 1. What's 6 divided by 2? 3. And that's going to go on top. Because when you divide, 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 6 three times, so it's left on top. Okay, so you see where the restrictions are coming from? To find them, you need to use the denominator. Go ahead and try to factor number four. Factor number four. So who wants to tell me what they got in the numerator? How'd you back to the top? Kelsey? Yes, because they're perfect squares. Someone else, how did you factor the bottom? Caleb? So I want you to take your denominators, x plus 1, set it equal to 0, and take x plus 4 equal to 0. And I want you to take a minute and solve them. Andrew, are you awake? Okay, so what did you do to solve the first one? They added one, what are you gonna do? Everyone should know this. Subtract one. They added four, what are you gonna do? Huh? Subtract four. So 
So we know x cannot equal negative 1 and negative 4. Ethan, I need your head up. What do you see you can cancel? The x plus 4s. So you have x minus 4 over x plus 1. Okay. Questions? Last one. Remember how we split it up. 12 over 14. Then we did the X's. And then we did the Y's. Now, your restrictions are easier here. You see X and Y and nothing else, right? So it's like X to the fifth equals zero. Well, the only thing that's got to the fifth power that's going to equal zero.